A federal judge slaps down Biden administration's attempt to dismiss Daily Wire censorship lawsuit. So, in a court order on Tuesday, a United States district judge rejected the Biden administration's department attempts to dismiss a censorship lawsuit brought by the Daily Wire, the Federalist, in the state of Texas. So, the Daily Wire lawsuit filed jointly by the New Civil Liberties Alliance with the Federalist in Texas on December of 2023 to the United States District Court of Eastern District of Te Texas alleges that the United States um, Department is engaging in, with in and promoting censorship technology designed to bankrupt domestic media outlets with disfavored political opinions. So, the lawsuit, which also named Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and five other officials as defendants, asked the court to declare the State Department's attempt to interfere with domestic speech illegally illegal, and to permanently bar it from developing, promoting, or engaging with others to use technology to amplify or de-amplify, shadow ban, or restrict the lawful freedom of speech of the American press and Americans. The State Department scheme, the complaint, the complaint states, is one of the most audacious, manipulative, secretive, and gravest abuses of power and infringements of the First Amendment right of the federal government in American history. And I completely can see this because if the United States government is trying to de-amplify voices that it does not agree with, then that is a clear violation of the First Amendment. You you just I, I just don't get why the government thinks that it is OK to completely disengage with the Constitution altogether and say, well, we're just going to do whatever we want to. Just like the Biden administration, where they go on and say, well, we're going to pass a um, executive order to allow us to you know, just to forgive student loans. And then the Supreme Court comes in and says, uh, no, you don't. Uncle Sam is not covering this. And then Joe Biden said, oh, well, we're going to do it anyway. Like, what? what's going on? We need to follow the law. We need to follow the rules. Just doesn't make any sense. Um, Judge Cardinal's ruling begins by quoting directly from the First Amendment and previous rulings enforcing the amendments um, certainly to the Constitution. Congress shall make no law abiding the freedom of speech or the press. The order begins. The provision enriches our profound national commitment to the free exchange of ideas. Indeed, if there is any fixed star in our constitution constellation, it is no constitutional consultation. It is that no official, high or petty, can prescribe what shall be orthodox in politics, nationalism, religion, or other matters of opinion, or force citizens to confess by word or act of faith therein. Judge Kendall goes on to shoot down the State Department's arguments for dismissal. Um, as the Daily Wire reported in December, GEC was founded in 2011 as the Center for, for Strategic Counterterrorism Communications and tasked with countering the propaganda of foreign terrorists like Al-Qaeda. In 2016, it was named, renamed but kept the same counterterrorism mission. Congress has made clear that none of the funds authorized for the entity shall be used for the purpose other than countering foreign propaganda. Nonetheless, GEC turned on its focus on Americans. The complaint, the complaint alleges, using taxpayer funds to finance the development and promotion of censorship organizations such as NewsGuard and the Global Disinformation Index, the GDI, which is regular target, cons which regularly conser targets conservative media outlets such as the Daily Wire and the Federalist, with the stated goal of limiting ad re revenue. The new Civil Liberties Alliance Mark um, Cherowith, who is representing the outlet, said that the federal government cannot do indirectly what the First Amendment obot or forbids it from doing directly. GDI's main product is a dynamic exclusion list of media outlets that it says present a high risk of disinformation. It licenses the list to advertisers who adopt it in a convenient way to avoid boycotts from the left. The playbook was deployed last month against Elon Musk when a blue chip advertisers, advertisers pursued were persuaded to stop advertising on the platform because the left wing media matters group claimed that big companies ads occasionally appeared next to objectionable content. GDI says that it aims to destroy the incentive to create disinformation for the purpose of garnering advertiser advertising revenues. GDI keeps its main buckle a secret, but publicly published its top 10 riskiest, uh, riskiest 
riskiest outlets, which were essentially a list of Americans' top prominent and mainstream conservative conservative media publication, including both The Daily Wire and The Federalist, as well as The New York Post and The Reason magazine. GDI was founded and promoted by the State Department defendants in the lawsuit, the lawsuit states, the State Department's defendants' active in intervention in the news media market to make this favored media unprofitable thus had this devastating consequences to media pantiffs. Also funded by the State Department is a for-profit company called NewsGuard, which said that it aimed to cut off revenues to fake news sites by coming up with a whitelist that purported to name every legitimate news site. NewsGuard ranks the Federalists as unreliable in the Daily Wire as credible with significant expectations. Okay, so that's just stupid. How is the Federalist unreliable? The Federalist is one of the articles, one of the news sites that I could always trust to have a four, like a whole entire essay piece written to the topic in the title. We're actually going to be reading a couple of articles from The Federalist next coming up. So I just don't understand why they're saying, well, it's unreliable all together. Why? It's because you don't agree with them. Just because you don't agree with somebody does not mean that they can't be funded. I don't agree with CNN. Do I want them to go bankrupt? Not really. I don't really want them to go bankrupt because it's good to read what the uh, the counterculture says or the culture, counterculture, in my view, says about the politics in the state of the world so I can see what's coming up. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, no, I want CNN, MSNBC. I want all of my political rivals to go bankrupt. I'm not going to sit here and say that because if they do go bankrupt, then it's going to be a sad world. It's going to be a very, very boring world. But the thing is, I do want the people that I trust, the people that I listen to for the news to be bigger than the than the people that I hate, obviously, because it's just good. There's such thing as good news. There's such thing as true news. And there's such things as news grounded in reality. And a lot of the time, quote unquote, mainstream media news sites are not grounded in reality whatsoever. And they have absolutely no common sense for anything. That's the problem here. And then NewsGuard says, oh, well, they're reliable, they're reliable. And then they get all the funding. And then the news sites that are that are not mainstream, that are conservative value leaning, that are on its own, they have to come up with the funding on their own. And that's by the public, the public's investment in their companies. That's the only way that these media companies can stay afloat. That's sad. So with that being said, it's a very, very sad time for America when when the news sites have to sue the federal government because it's breaking the First Amendment. And it's just sad. And this is a really, really good win from the Daily Wire and the Federalist in the state of Texas altogether because of the fact that it did not get dismissed. If it got dismissed, it's a blatant, it's a blatant attack on free speech and the freedom of the press. Because then we would see all these media companies, probably even Arujo Studios, which is a small, small media company that we just founded a few years ago. We can see that all collapse, and it's a sad, 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 pathetic excuse for First Amendment um, non-violation. We can see that it is a clear First Amendment violation.